Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dr. Janine Show. I am so excited to have you all here today. This is going to be a great show. And guess what we're talking about today? So we are, yes, if you have missed it and you've missed my post, then... I know that you know what this is all about. This is about gut health. So we're gonna be talking about gastritis. I've had so many questions about that. Inflammation in the stomach, we're talking about that. And of course, having healthy poops. We're also doing oil pulling today. If you don't know what that is, then I'm going to describe how you do that oil pulling. Great for your oral health and more about that. We're also making a delicious matcha latte today, which I'm so excited about and you're gonna love that. I'm gonna share that recipe with you. And we're talking leptin resistance. So I know that question keeps coming up as well. How to balance your hormones, especially for that weight loss. And I'm talking about eczema today as well. So this is a loaded show. Please say hello and let me know where you're all from. It's so great to have you all here today. I'm super excited about today's show. Don't forget, we always have quiz questions throughout the shows as well. And we have prizes. So we're going to be playing for a prize as well. And I totally am going to, you know, be calling out some of our and the best people, of course, that have shared their good news with us over the past few weeks. Okay, so I want to make sure that we are now going to start the show, and we do have some quiz questions coming up, so make sure that you are ready for that. Please say hello, everyone, and let me know where you're from, and it's so great to have you all here. Okay, so let's now first talk about leptin resistance. And I'm going to describe what that is all about because leptin and your leptin signaling has a lot to do with what's going on with your hormones and balancing your hormones. And for those of you who struggle with weight and trying to get that weight off, or if you're too thin and you're trying to regulate your metabolism, this is really important in terms of being able to get that leptin resistance, of course, in the right way. And this is important because leptin has a lot to do, and nobody's talking about this, in terms of insulin insulin levels, in terms of balancing those hormones, in terms of keeping your blood glucose level stable, really important. Okay, so what's happening with leptin resistance? Number one is you are hungry all the time. And this is something that we definitely want to go back and, you know, looking at that hunger, this is something that, can we bring that back, please? We're going to there we go. So what happens is it, that you're craving carbohydrates all the time, and that is going to, of course, increase your blood glucose levels. So what happens then, of course, with that increased food intake, is that your leptin levels are going to go up. Why is that? Well, leptin is something that is secreted by your fat cells. So as you're accumulating more fat because you're hungry all the time and you're craving all those carbohydrates, your leptin levels are going to go up. Okay, so a little bit of leptin is a good thing. Don't get, don't get me wrong. However, when it's too high, then it can cause inflammation. And there's something called C-reactive protein. And that's a marker, something that you can have checked in your blood work, especially that highly sensitive CRP. And that's an indicator now of that inflammation. But that CRP is going to attach to the leptin, and now it can't get back into the brain. And this is where the leptin resistance happens, because now your brain is not reading that proper signaling of those leptin and that high leptin that's happening here. And what happens? Now the hypothalamus doesn't get the right message. Now it's leptin resistance. And guess what? Because the leptin signal seems like it's high, but now it's blocked. What happens? You get more craving for carbohydrates. And now you get increased food intake. You're hungry all the time. You can't figure out why. You do your best with your diet. And if this is you, please say yes, it's me in the comments. And I'm going to shout you out. But this is something that you definitely want to make sure that you're getting a handle on. Because it's so difficult when you're trying to lose weight if you're hungry all the time. That's one of the big reasons why that big drug out there starts with an O. It's an injection that people are taking once a week super popular right now and I've, I've done videos about that and my reservations about that certain drug and some of the really negative side effects you really have to do your due diligence but that's one of the reasons why that drug works is because it shuts off the hunger if you're not hungry you're not eating of course and that is something that we can need to address from a natural perspective of course with the leptin resistance so this is really really important of course the more 
food you're eating, the more fat gain, then the more leptin, the more inflammation. And again, with this thing goes around and around and around and around for 20, 30, 40 years, you can't figure out why you can't lose the weight. It's the leptin resistance. But here are my tips though, and that's the thing, to fix the leptin resistance, there are certain things that we definitely need to do. So let's go over here and talk about exactly those tips. So let's start with number one. What I want you to do is eat a big breakfast, and ideally you're focusing in on healthy protein, healthy fats. That's important. If you do have some carbohydrates, eat them at the end of the meal. Okay, tip number two, no fasting. Fasting is not the best thing for leptin resistance because this has a lot to do with your circadian rhythms as well. You got to get your circadian rhythms in sync. So no fasting at the beginning. If you do need to fast, you're fasting your dinner. Okay, tip number three, no heavy exercise. Woo woo. I know a lot of people are like jubilating over this. Yes? Yeah, put a one in the comments if you're, you're loving tip number three. But I'm not saying not to exercise at all. I'm just like no like crazy hit classes and spinning classes and running marathons. When you're fixing the leptin resistance, you can get there eventually, but that extra inflammation is not something that's helpful when you're trying to fix your leptin. Okay, number four, morning sunlight. Yeah, this is important. Seeing that early morning sunlight, you see me talk about this in so many of my videos, which is so important. Number five, Limit your blue light, so this is important as well, because why? That blue light is gonna give your body, your brain, those wrong signals, and this is really important, that we're not giving the wrong signals in terms of our circadian rhythms, and that's something that you have to block that blue light. Number six, sleep well. So sleeping well is something that you definitely have to do, and this is all about those you know, proper circadian rhythms and making sure that you're fixing your leptin. Your leptin secretion is highest during sleep, the first few hours after sleep, so you want to make sure that that is maximized. You're getting that good night's sleep. That helps your metabolism and your thyroid function as well, so that's really important. Okay, we're going to talk about some of the benefits now of matcha. So how many people love matcha? I know that so many of you are commenting that you absolutely love your matcha. If you've never tried matcha before, it's not something to be afraid of. I, we're going to make a delicious <coughs> collagen matcha latte recipe in just a few moments in the kitchen set. So we're going to go there in just a few minutes. Say hello if you're here for the first time and please be sure that you share today's live as well. It's so great to have you all here today. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Love to have, and there's so many new people here as well. So thanks to all my new followers. There's been crazy things happening, of course, behind the scenes on all my social media accounts. So thank you for tuning in today. So great to have you all here. Okay. Now, matcha. Matcha is a type and a specific type of green tea made from the top three layers of the young shade grown tea plants. And the scientific name of green tea is Camellia sinensis. So that's really important for you to know that yes, it's from a certain part of the green tea plant. And the active ingredients in matcha are caffeine, which we know gives you a bit of that kick because of the caffeine, but also catechins, chlorophyll, and that's what makes it nice, that dark green color, and theanine. So these are all, you know, really important antioxidants as well to help to keep your body healthy and, of course, to protect you from free radical damage. Now, the research also shows that matcha tea is 137 times higher in that catechins than any other type of tea, such as regular tea. And of course, we're gonna show you a study as well that in the study, we can see that those benefits of matcha, we can see here are, and the results indicated that the concentration of the EGCG, which is that active component, that active, of course, that antioxidant, available from drinking matches 137 times greater than the amount of that EGCG, those catechins that you're getting just from green tea, so regular green tea. So matcha is stronger in the EGCG. And guess what? There's studies that show that EGCG is great for weight loss, especially for that belly fat. So this is really promising. That's why you're gonna love my matcha recipe that's coming up because it's so, so delicious. Okay. Now let's talk about some of the other benefits of matcha. So like I just said, number one, of course, benefit for weight loss. Now in this study, 
The acute ingestion of the green tea extract can increase fat oxidation. So that's what we want to burn off that fat with moderate intensity exercise and can prove insulin sensitivity, glucose tolerance in healthy young men. Okay, so that is fantastic. Of course, that was done in men, but I'm sure it translates into women as well. Okay, number two, another benefit, of course, is for heart disease. So that is important in terms of the antioxidant status of your matcha in terms of protecting the arteries and, of course, your blood from those free radicals. Okay, number three is diabetes. So yes, balancing blood glucose levels, really, really important. And in this study, it was found that the catagens regulate diabetes by improving insulin resistance. And most findings in this study imply that catagens or catagen-rich diets, such as green tea intake, have various beneficial effects in diabetes. So that's really, really important as well, balancing blood glucose levels. And another benefit of matcha, as if we didn't have enough already, is of course for cancer. So that, you know, that high ability in terms of quenching free radicals, that antioxidant effect, really, really great in terms of the benefits of matcha. So I want you to screenshot that really quickly so you've got it. And I'm going to suggest now that you don't just run out and buy a matcha green tea latte. No, those, the ones that you buy in, you know, the coffee shops are usually loaded with sugar. They have the wrong type of almond milk and, or regular milk in that case, you know, it's not always grass fed. So we're going to make a delicious on our own today, my delicious recipe for matcha, which you're going to love. Okay. It's already quiz time. Hello, hello, nice to see you all, thank you. Kitty Talk Journey, nice to see you, thank you for tuning in. Sandy, hello, nice to see you. Salman Erica, hello, nice to see you. Mary had four kids, me as well. Hello, hello, I have five all together, but I've had four. And hello, nice to see you, thank you for tuning in today, it's so great to have you here. Thank you for sharing today's live. Thank you to all my new followers as well, so great to have you. If you're here for the first time, please put a one in the comments because we do this every week, so every Tuesday at this time slot. We are live here at the Dr. Janine Show. We share different health topics every week. It's so great to have you here. Nanette, thank you for the first time. Enigmas Corner, thank you for tuning in. Shangi, Estelle, nice to see you. Thank you. Mrs. V, hello, nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in. We are having fun here. We're going to go to the kitchen in just a minute. We're talking beauty, beautiful white teeth today as well. It's a great show. We're talking gastritis and gut health. We talked about leptin resistance already. But it's quiz time, so this is the, my favorite part of the show. We do this every week, and what we do is we're playing for a prize. And I'll just share with you, this is from our great sponsors at VitaTree. So we're playing for the VitaTree Collagen. So good luck, everyone. This is going to be amazing, amazing. Just try your best. You don't even need to really answer the questions correctly, but just try your best. And the questions are based on what we've talked about in either previous shows or in today's show. So it's to keep you on your toes, to make sure that you are paying attention and that you stay tuned, right? And that you're listening and listening. Okay, it's just like school. I, I People say that I, I must have been a, a good, um, teacher in a past life maybe not in this lifetime but i teach all of you and that's what i love to do thank you for tuning in guys and thank you to all my new followers and for everybody who's sharing today's live because i see a lot of you are doing that we're going to call out some of our super fans as well today in today's show okay it's quiz time i gotta stop talking ready we gotta get to our first quiz question are we ready true or false leptin resistance can make you constantly hungry. You've got 30 seconds on the clock. Put your answers in, go now. Here we go. All right, everybody get your answers in. Everybody, everybody get your answers in. Ready? Five, four, three, two, and one. Good job, everyone. I saw so many answers coming in. And of course, the answer is 
True. So if you missed it when I was talking about what leptin resistance is all about, it's all about balancing your hormones and fixing that leptin resistance is something that I talk a lot about in my social media. Okay, so make sure you check it out and check out my video so that you learn how to help yourself with your leptin signaling. Okay, so I want to congratulate last week's winner and that was of the Vitatree Paravid. Congratulations to Louise H. Yay! Congratulations, Louise. Good job. Now make sure, please, that you are following, you see at the bottom of the slide, make sure that you are following Team Dr. J9 so that our team can reach out to you. Make sure you're following me, of course, as well, and so that we can reach you if you are a lucky winner from this week's show. Okay, now let's talk about tips for gastritis. So when we're talking about inflammation in the stomach in particular and helping our gut health, this is important. Now we will be talking about eczema in just a few minutes, so if that's a concern for you or someone that you know, Stay tuned because that's coming up as well. But let's talk about stomach health and gut health. And that is with gastritis and inflammation of the lining of the stomach. And it's often caused by stress as well as certain things that you may be taking. So let's say you get headaches or migraines all the time and you're taking a simple painkiller like ibuprofen or aspirin. That can actually cause a lot of inflammation, that gastritis. So not everybody always knows those links. So just to be aware of that. And of course, H. pylori, which is that bacteria which is commonly the cause of having gastric ulcers and inflammation in the lining and with that gastritis. So this is important and I'm going to share my natural tips now that have been so successful for you know so many of my patients over the years which is absolutely amazing. Okay so let's go over here. Tip number one for gastritis and to help with your gut health is to use specific herbal medicines that are known to help to really soothe that digestive tract but more importantly kill off some of those less wanted organisms. So things like black walnut Walnut, I love. Oregano, the whole plant. And this isn't just me saying this. This has actually been found in the literature. In this study, they talked about combinations of beneficial plant extracts provide a natural and dietary solution as well as an additional strategy to inhibit the growth of H. pylori. So that's really important because as much as, you know, we may think that it's only, you know, those, those four antibiotics that can be used to kill the H. pylori, if you've experienced this before, you know, not so true. I mean, there are other things in nature that Mother Nature gives us that can help with killing off that less wanted organism when, of course, it overgrows and multiplies. And I've had a lot of success with that in using, you know, some of these specific herbal medicines that I've talked about. Okay, number two is probiotics. So yes, you have to do the kill phase with the herbal medicines, but then you've got to put the good guys back in, and that's exactly what your probiotics are. They're your live flora. You put them back into the gut. That helps your immunity, but it also helps with that inflammation the gut as well. Now in this study it was found and several studies identified different probiotic strains that were effective in H. pylori eradication. So not just like inhibiting it, eradication of H. pylori and this is by different mechanisms. So this is, this is, this is big, this is huge. And number three, another tip for gastritis and your gut health is to fix the overall inflammation in your body. So reconnecting with nature is super important. Remember when we were talking a few minutes ago about leptin resistance, a huge cause of that you know, ever ending wheel of leptin resistance and that inflammation, huge problem. That even affects your digestion. So fixing your leptin resistance is gonna be really important for your digestive health as well. And that's why you tune into this show. Hello, hello, nice to see you. Alfia, nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in today. It's so great to see you. And I'm so sorry if I don't call you all out. I do my best. Thank you for sharing today's live as well. I see that happening. And thanks for all the love and all the hearts and all the, the gifts and things that you give. And that's why I say thanks to all of my super fans and all my fans from across all of the platforms. And thank you to everyone who supported this channel and my endeavors to always be educating you and bettering you with your health and of course doing it naturally. And we do want to call out someone special. So this is for Gordo Martinez. Thank you as being a super fan. Thank you for all your support of this channel. It's so great to have all of this positive feedback and your appreciation for what I do. And more importantly, I appreciate all of you for always tuning in, supporting you know, all of the work that we do here at the Dr. Janine Show. And of course, across all of the platforms in terms of the content that we share and getting healthier. So thank you to Duku in Trinidad. Nice to see you. Please everyone put um, Jojo Relaxing is in Canada. Nice to see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning 
coming in. It's so great to have you here. Sharon's asking, what is leptin? Please check out my post. We can go back to it, you know, if that's something that we want to see, but thank you for tuning in today. Okay. Now we're going to go down. I'm going to get busy on the floor doing an ab exercise and working on our abdominal muscles is something that's really, really important, especially for our good posture, especially if you have back pain. So this is something that we've talked about in previous episodes, but we want to strengthen the ab muscles and doing something that is not a sit up and that is really taxing on all of those abdominals. And when you see it, when you try this for the, you, when you watch me do it, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, cause that's how I was. Oh yeah, that looks like, like it's not doing anything. That looks way too simple. But when you actually try this exercise, you will know what I'm talking about. Working on all of our muscles in the abdominal region. So the serratus anterior, so those ones that help to cinch in your waist, your external obliques, your internal obliques, as well as the rectus abdominis, which of course is the six, eight pack. Everybody's got a six pack underneath. Sometimes it's a little bit hidden with some fluffiness on top, but everybody's got those abdominal muscles and you can strengthen them and you know help to with the appearance, if that's something that you care about. And we don't all care about that, but some of us do. Okay, so let's get down here. And I'm gonna show you this fantastic exercise. So all you need is something on the floor. Now I have a weight as an example, but you don't need to have a weight. And it could be a soup can. It could be a bottle of water. The trick here is don't make it too tall because the taller it is, the more difficult this is really gonna become. And you're gonna put whatever that object is and you're keeping your legs about hip width apart, depending on how big and wide your object is, and you're going to lean back slightly. So I'm just gonna hold my hands here just to kind of counteract my, my weight. And then I'm gonna start with my right leg, and so you're leaning back, so that already you're engaging all of your ab muscles, but now you're just simply lifting your leg over and back, over that weight. Every trip back and forth is counted as one, so I'm on number three, four, and you're gonna go up to 10 on each leg. And I'm telling you, it, it starts to burn. So you're gonna do 10 on your right leg, and then you're gonna do 10 on your left leg. That's one. So every trip, two. You get what I'm saying? This is killer. You're gonna see, it is killer. And the first time I saw somebody do this, I'm like, yeah, that's so easy. No, it's not. So I want you to all try that. If anybody's tried that exercise before, please put a yes in the comments, but I want you all to try it. And maybe let's, uh, Jojo relaxes saying, yeah, no sit-ups, no sit-ups required, but try this. This is amazing, amazing, amazing for all of those abs and helping with your posture. And if you do have low back pain, this is a great one because you're actually working your back muscles at the same time. Okay, everyone. All right, we are at quiz question number two already. Wow, today's show's flying by. Are we ready? Okay, we're gonna be playing for the Vita Tree Collagen. Now we will be going to the kitchen in just a second. We're actually gonna be using this in the recipe today. But is everybody ready? Okay, quiz question number two. You've got 30 seconds once that clock starts. Name an active component of matcha. This one's a little bit more difficult. Okay, you got 30 seconds. Start now. An active component of matcha, something that we talked about. That's okay, just try. Oh my goodness, so many good answers already coming in. Good job, good job. And thank you for all those gifts coming in. I see that. Thank you, guys. That's so kind. Thank you. Okay, five seconds. Four, three, Two and one. I hope everybody got their answers in. Some of the active components in matcha include caffeine, catechins, which remember are those important antioxidants, would have all the benefits that we talked about, chlorophyll, and theanine as well. So congratulations everybody who got their answers in. Good job, good job. I saw so many good answers, which is amazing. Okay. We're gonna mix something up now, and this is a delicious collagen matcha latte. And again, if you go to your favorite coffee shop and you purchase this type of drink, it can be loaded with sugar, it can be loaded with a ton of calories. They don't use the right milks, in my opinion, of course, and you're not 
ever that I've seen getting collagen in with it. So this is why I love to mix different things together to get the beauty benefits. But of course, with the green tea, you're getting those antioxidant benefits as well. Okay, so what we're, and you're gonna be able to screenshot this recipe. We're gonna show you the recipe in just a second, so don't worry about that. Okay, so, and we will be coming, we do have one more quiz question coming up, so stay tuned for that. You haven't missed anything yet. Okay, so you still have an opportunity to win. Okay, here we go. We're gonna start with matcha powder, which of course has all those benefits, those antioxidants that we talked about. And of course, a scoop of the VitaTree collagen. So we thank our sponsors at VitaTree for supporting this channel and making this whole event possible in the first place. Okay, then we're adding in just a little bit of hot water and that's just really to blend out the collagen and your green tea. And if you have one of those fancy whisker things, those frother, I guess it's called a frother, you can definitely froth this. And for me, if mine's a little bit clumpy, it doesn't really bother me, but yeah, if you really wanna go the extra mile and, and use the frother for this part of the matcha, you can definitely do that. But this is amazing. Now, the other thing that you can add here, which is totally up to you, is a little bit of sweetener. So I like either stevia or monk fruit sweetener. And this is something that you can add into there as well. And then we are mixing, mixing, mixing. How many of you love green tea? I don't know. How many people love a matcha latte and you just go and order it? And of course, this is ice. So you can do this hot as well. So you would just add in some more hot water. But then I've got my ice and I'm using the almond milk that I like. So either you make your own almond milk, you can use grass-fed milk, whatever you like. That's totally up to you. And I just pour that over my ice, because remember this is the iced version, but then all you're doing is now pouring your matcha over that. And we can see that beautiful green color. Remember the chlorophyll, the catechins that are in there, absolutely delicious. You can mix that up, stir it up a little bit, and there you go. Mm. I was so looking for, I didn't even have my coffee today. I was so looking forward to having my matcha latte and it's so yummy, yay. Mm. So I want you to mix that up. Let's go and take a look at the recipe really quickly. You will love it, I should actually. I'm bringing this with me because it's way too good. As you're screenshotting this, I'm gonna enjoy my collagen mate, matcha latte. There's the recipe, super, super simple. There you go, take a screenshot of that really quickly so that you've got it as I drink. I know, I see Carla, you love matcha as much as I do. I love it, I love it, so good. Um, and Lake Erie just ordered some matcha yesterday. Amazing, amazing. Good job, nice to see you all here, okay. We got that? Okay, awesome, awesome. Let me put that down. I would just love to enjoy that for the rest of the show. Okay, now let's talk about eczema because I had so many of your questions came in about eczema and I will be answering some of your questions. I see a lot of questions coming in and I can't get to them right now, but I will get to them. So just stay on whatever platform that you're on. I'm gonna to come to those in just a second. But here we go. Let's talk about the eczema and a different perspective really at looking at eczema. So some of my tips, number one includes making sure that you're getting enough of your omega-3s. So this is really important, your omega-3 fatty acids, especially that DHA, which is, as humans is something that we tend to be more deficient in. So you wanna make sure that you're getting enough of that DHA, of course seafood, is one of the best sources of that DHA, but it does help with your skin barrier function and that's really, really important. We know with eczema, there's a lot of dryness happening. There's a lot of inflammation happening. Your DHA is a natural anti-inflammatory as well. So that's really, really, really important for that eczema. Okay, tip number two is to get enough sunlight. So sunlight at different times of the day. So if that first early morning sunlight, really, really important, of course, because that's gonna program your skin for later in the day. It actually starts your protection of, and you need that UV protection later in the day, but this is important to get that early morning sunlight. It tells your brain to actually protect your skin for later in the day for the UV, because at midday, you do need that UV. That UV is very reparative to the skin. I'm not saying to fry yourself. I'm saying get just enough, and you're gonna know, following your intuition, how much is enough, depending on your skin type, and then in the evening, as that sun is setting, it tends to be very high in the wavelength of the red, which we know people who have red lights and things 
helps to heal the skin, okay? So this is really important. And my next tip for eczema, doing that full body detox. So if you've seen my videos, you've seen my content, I talk a lot about this, and making sure that you're cleansing internally those internal organs. I'm doing my detox right now. There's a few of us in the office that are doing the full body detox right now. We, we all jump in into that ship together and we do it together. It is amazing because it doesn't make you feel awful. I actually feel lighter as I'm doing it. It's amazing, it gives you lots of energy, helps to make sure that you know the bowels are moving if you tend to be a little bit slow. So that's something that you can definitely look into. And that's using different herbal medicines. And that's the way that I like to do that full body detox, taking different herbal medicines to get those organs better at doing what they already do and should be doing. The herbal medicines just help to accelerate that process. And that's why it should be very gentle when you're doing a full body detox. Okay, thank you. I know a lot of questions are coming in. I'm gonna to get to those. Thank you for sharing today's live as well. It's so great to have you all here today. So many new people are here as well. So thank you, thank you for following. Thank you for sharing. And thanks for all my fans. I mean, there's so many of you who have such great news and you always share, you know, some great insights as to what you're learning and, and you know, tuning into the Dr. Jane show and my content as well. So this is from Akarathis. I follow you on Instagram, but this is my first time jo joining a live, so that was probably last week. Keep on doing great work, so thank you so much for sharing that amazing, amazing, and continue to share all of your positive feedback from you know whatever you're learning. It doesn't matter to me, whatever you're, even if you pick up one little tidbit of information with my content and in my shows, that makes me so happy. So please continue sending in all of that, all that goodness that you do because I love, I love to see it. Okay, let's go to the beauty set. I know I'm talking a lot today. So let's go and talk about oil pulling. So put a one in the comments if this is something that you do or you've tried. Put a two in the comments if you've never heard of oil pulling, if you don't know what that is. Okay, so I'm just going to wait for a few seconds. I'm going to take a look at what's coming in on the comments. Okay, Victor, Erica, yes, you know what it is. Christine, Jerry, you're not sure what oil pulling is. Okay, Frankie, uh, Carolyn's, some of you know, Little Mama, yes, oil pulling. Fatima, yes, oil pulling. Uh, Kumud, yes, Ku Brady, not sure what it is. Okay, this is great because now I've got, you know, some people that know what oil pulling is, some people who have no idea. And it's based on Ayurvedic medicine, <clears throat> which is a traditional medicine from India, of course. But the studies have shown that oil pulling actually kills bacteria in the mouth and can improve your dental health. So this is one study that was, and it was found that using sesame oil, now I use a different oil, and we'll talk about that <clears throat> and exactly what oil pulling is because I'm sure you're still curious, that using, in this study, sesame oil was as efficacious as using chlorhexidine, which is you know, something powerful that usually the dentist will use to rinse out your mouth and, and kill off the bad bacteria there. And now that was for reducing bad breath, but also another study was that it helped to significantly decrease the amount of organisms in the mouth. So killing off, you know, those less favorable organisms, which of course lead to bad breath, leads to dental cavities. The great thing as well about oil pulling is that it whitens your teeth. So anybody who's practiced oil pulling for, you know, a number of years, you'll notice how bright and white their teeth is, which is amazing. So basically all you do, and I prefer coconut oil, just putting and swishing a spoonful of coconut oil, and now you can use the more, this is the more liquid one, but you can use the more dense one, of course, that at room temperature, depending on the temperature of the room, solidifies a little bit. But basically, and I'm not gonna do it here, but maybe that's for a future video, but basically you just put a spoonful of that coconut oil in your mouth and you swish it around. So keep your lips pursed and, and closed and just swish it around as if it were mouthwash. Swish, 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 swish. Um, one to two minutes is all you need, then you spit it out. It all actually draws toxins out of the mouth as well. And when the first few times when I tried oil pulling, I don't know if any of you have experienced this as well, I felt so, like a little bit nauseous, like a little bit sick to my stomach. I think it was pulling a lot of toxins. And I'm, I'm pretty, you know, pretty healthy, 
not so toxic girl. I do talk, detoxes all the time. However, that's how I felt the first few times that I did the oil pulling. So yeah, I'm curious if anybody else has experienced that, but this is amazing. Thank you for the roses. I see we're getting roses. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for being here today. If you're tuning in right now, I'm Dr. Janine. This is the Dr. Jean show. We do this every Tuesday this time. So make sure that you tune in every week because we have new topics every week. We have quiz questions. We still have one quiz question coming up, I believe. Yes, yes, we do. Okay, it's coming up right now. So that is oil pulling. So swish it around, spit out. So a big point here with the oil pulling, after you've swished it around in your mouth, spit it out. You can do this once a day, and that's a great way to really pull those toxins, helps with you know bad breath, a great way to clean up the environment in your mouth. Okay, we are at quiz question number three. Remember, we are playing for the VitaTree Collagen. I thank everyone who's here today, and of course thank our sponsors at VitaTree for making this show possible in the first place. Are we ready? Quiz question number three, here we go. True or false, oil pulling is an effective way to help kill unwanted bacteria in the mouth. You've got 30 seconds, let's go put your answers in right now, all right. <laughs> Good job, everyone. Yes, I think everybody was paying attention today, which is amazing. Good job, good job. You got a 50-50 chance if you're not sure. I don't see any wrong answers, I don't think, yet. Everybody get your answers in. Good job, everyone. All right. And there we go. Everybody got your answers in. I think I saw not one wrong answer. Everybody had the right answer. Yes, the answer is of course true. Congratulations to everybody who participated. Good job, everyone. And if you're just tuning in, we do quiz questions every show. So that is something that you, you know, can have fun and of course win a prize. Make sure you are following Team Dr. J9 though, so that if you are a lucky winner that we can reach out to you. Okay. So what's happening next? Oh, we're here. Yes. So if you're just tuning in, we did some ab exercises today. If you want me to show you that again, of course I can. We talked about oil pulling. We talked about the benefits of matcha. We did make a beautiful recipe. So that collagen matcha latte is something that was absolutely delicious. I'm going to show you that because it's yummy. I want you to make this at home for yourself. So, so good. And yeah, I want another sip. If you want to see this recipe, if you're just tuning in now, we can pull it up again so that you can screenshot it. Just just put it in the comments and drinking coffee with an empty stomach and I'm going to answer some questions now as well. We, we did talk about gastritis. Let me just finish what I was supposed to say. We did talk about gastritis, leptin resistance today as well. If there's anything else that you wanted to see that we can pull up on the boards, let us know. But yes, drinking coffee on an empty stomach is possible. However, I do recommend when you first wake up, I've talked about this in other videos, is that the first thing that you have is a big glass of water to rehydrate. We know that caffeine and coffee can act as a diuretic, can dehydrate you. So you want to rehydrate first thing when you wake up with a big glass of water. Then if you want to do your coffee on an empty stomach, absolutely. Now, if the fasting is something that you do in the morning, it's not something that I actually recommend in terms of fixing the leptin signaling first. You want to maybe not fast in the morning. You want to fast your dinner instead uh, to fix the leptin signaling. Leptin resistance. Pebbles wants to see leptin resistance. Ooh, my pleasure. My favorite topic. Okay, we're going to go back to leptin resistance on the board. And maybe I'll go through that really quickly again. Okay, here we go. All right. Yes, let's go through this really quickly because I'm sure a few of you are wondering... What is going on with the leptin resistance? Thank you for all the flowers and I see all these lovely emojis coming through. Thank you so much. It's so kind of you to do that. Okay, so let's talk about leptin. So leptin is something that is secreted by your fat cells, but let's start down here. So how many of you crave carbohydrates? Just put a one in the comments. Don't be shy about it. I used to do this as well. I used to be like a carb junkie. Despite my best efforts to not, yes, Sheila, yes, Victor, yes, Kovmeister, yes, uh, Christine, yes, Tara, okay, so this is a common thing, Lori, yes, pineapple, joy, lots of cra carb cravings, you crave chips, Raina, yeah, Queen Bee, okay, lots of people love their carbohydrates, so, yeah, Salon America, uh, T. Wright, Ravigi, Liz Q, Exotic Kitchen, okay, a lot of you are craving carbohydrates. So this is something that I want you to get past 
this craving, you've got to fix the leptin resistance. So if you're new to what leptin resistance is, please check out my other videos. I give so many tips. And, you know, it's a step-by-step -step thing. Letitia, yeah, the specific drink that you like, that, yeah, mm -hmm, I see that. That's a lot of carbs. Um, but no judgment. It's, it's very difficult if it's just you and your brain trying to say, okay, I'm not going to have the carbs. I'm not going to have the carbs. But if you're constantly craving it because your brain is making you crave it more, because guess what? With the leptin resistance and that inflammation from having that leptin resistance is getting blocked at the brain, the hypothalamus. Your brain cannot read that leptin. And that's why it's sending the messages to your body to eat more and more carbohydrates. So let's really start here. So your brain doesn't recognize that leptin messaging. So now you crave more carbs because your body thinks that you're starving. So your body, your brain thinks that you're starving because it's not getting that message of that bound leptin, which is attached to the CRP because of the inflammation. Okay, you don't have to understand this all the first time, but in a nutshell, now your brain's getting the wrong messages, so it's making you crave more carbohydrates. Here's where the problem is, okay? You're craving the carbs, and now you're increasing your blood glucose levels, and now usually you're lacking in having enough of that DHA, so that's why the seafood is so important, and making sure that you're getting enough of those essential fatty acids. Zinc is another factor, magnesium. So you're overeating, okay? And that you're eating those carbs. Now what happens when we eat too many carbs? We put on weight, we get fatter. The more fat cells you have, guess where leptin is secreted? It's secreted from the fat cells. Okay, so you can see how this is a problem when this keeps going around and around and around. Now that is going, there's gonna be a secretion of C-reactive protein, which is inflammation, and that CRP attaches to your leptin and now that leptin, because it's attached, is not read properly by the leptin receptors in the hypothalamus. Now, what happens? Brain's getting the signal, low leptin, so there's no leptin here. We need to put on some more weight, we need to be hungrier so that we get some higher leptin. Crazy, right? But that's what's happening. So that's your leptin resistance. I hope that makes sense. I had to sort of draw this out for myself a few times, and that's why we were able, and my team was fantastic at creating this slide for me, because sometimes what's in my head doesn't always translate into something that people can understand. But most times it does, and that's what, you know, um, I'm told anyways, that I have the gift of being able to, to translate some of that, you know, heavy doctory stuff into a way that people can understand. And I appreciate all that feedback that you give to me, and I hope that makes sense. Yes, put a yes or a one in the comments, please, if you understand this now. A little bit better than what you did before. Dr. Brandy, you get it now. I'm so excited and I'm happy that this is making sense for you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Any other questions that have come in throughout the show? I know I missed so many of them because there were so many coming in at once, but yeah, okay, good. You understand? And Kovmeister, thank you. I'm glad. And thanks for the feedback. But yeah, this is something that I have in my videos. So you can like pause my videos. This slide that we created is in my videos. And just for you to understand, that's why fixing the leptin resistance and taking the steps to fix that leptin resistance is going to be really important for you. Okay, awesome. I'm going to come over here to Lucy for just a second because I think there was a question again about um, digestion. And... Nora, avoiding sugar, wheat, soda, amazing. Fried foods, okay, that's good. An anti-inflammatory diet, amazing, amazing. Good job on that. Now the meat, controversial. I mean, some people need to get enough protein, so it depends on the type of meat as well. I'm a big fan of having seafood, and I used to um, not eat as much as what I do now, which is uh, which is amazing. Is there more leptins in certain food? No, leptin is so, is a hormone. It's not in food. It's secreted by your fat cells. You may be confusing it with lectins. So maybe that's a post that I'll do because, and make, can we make a note please behind the scenes? Lectin versus leptins. I, I, that question has come up a few times. Uh, English queen, how do you make the matcha? So, okay, let's bring up that uh, recipe slide really quickly. And here we go. So you're gonna get your matcha powder. You're gonna mix that with a bit of hot water and with the collagen. And you can put some sweetener in there. So if you wanna use uh, some stevia or monk fruit, you can certainly do that. Some people wanna do honey. It's totally up to you, no judgment. But for, for, and you could put cinnamon as well. Absolutely delicious. And 
You're going to mix that up with your hot water. Um, you can use the little frother thingy if you want to. Then you're gonna have your almond milk and your ice and you're gonna pour your matcha on top of that. You could do this hot as well. So you could do a hot, um, same recipe, just without the ice and heat up your milk. Delicious, delicious. And you could really use, it doesn't have to be almond milk. It could be any type of milk that you like. But there you have it. I hope that you um, have, it, have that for you. Okay, here's a good question. Um, Dina Santos, you're in terms of diabetes, wanting to gain weight, not lose it. It's the same issue, leptin resistance. So yeah, so managing that that those leptin receptors is important and be able to gain the weight as well because it's always the leptin resistance that happens before the insulin resistance. So this is important for people to know if you have blood glucose issues, um, pre-diabetic, diabetic, that you're fixing the leptin resistance, really important. Uh, is K, okay, here's a good question. Is almond milk better than oat milk? I have posts on this. I'm going to do some more notes, please, behind the scenes. Oat milk versus almond milk. I prefer almond milk. Oat milk, there's no protein. It's, if you're not getting it from a reputable company, then it's, there's a glyphosate issue. I've got videos on glyphosate and I'm, I'm not a big fan. It's high in carbs and I'm not a big fan of oat milk. Um, because of the, the GMO glyphosate issue with oats and trusting, you know, where it's coming from. So that's a great question. I'm going to do a post on that. I, we have to refresh that, that topic, which is fantastic. Uh, Righteous David, what's the best type of magnesium to take with uh, certain conditions? I really like magnesium bisglycinate. That's my favorite type because it's highly absorbed. You just got to be careful with any magnesium supplement. With a bisglycinate, it helps to counteract some of this glyphosate issue that I'm talking about because it has glycine, which is really important. It works like a neurotransmitter, which is important for your cellular communication as well. But you've got to be careful with magnesium and all supplements for that matter because of the fillers and the flow agents. Often they're going to, and most times they're going to use a magnesium stearate, which is a flow agent, a vegetable stearate, vegetable magnesium stearate. These are all flow agents that help to speed up production times, but not necessarily the healthiest thing. And there's never been a long-term human study done on magnesium stearate to make sure that it is safe for human consumption. So this is really important. Okay, I know there's more questions coming in. If you do have a question, a specific question, please, I want to pull up this email. Hello at VitaTree.com. So please email your questions into the team at VitaTree if you do have specific questions or if I wasn't able to answer your question. I know you want to see the ab exercise again. I think I'm out of time. Do I have time? Okay, I got to ask. Okay, we're going to go just for two seconds. We're going to go back to the floor. I'm going to do this ab exercise. Okay, so we're running over here real quickly. Okay, so all you're going to do, this works on all your abs. As I do this quickly, you guys are making me sweat today at the end of the show. I love it, love it. Okay, uh, thanks for all the hearts coming in. And I see there, this is all happening, which is amazing. Okay, so basically you're gonna lean back a little bit. Great for your abs, great for strengthening your back. And I just hold my hands kind of in front of me. Sometimes I pray, it's like, please let me get through this. But you put a weight, you put something at your feet. It could be a pop can, it could be anything, whatever it is. And hopefully it doesn't have sugar in it, of course to fix that leptin resistance in your insulin levels. But basically you lean back slightly and you just lift your leg. So one, that's one trip, that's one. No cheating. Two, three, and you're gonna do 10 on each leg. You're gonna feel it burn. By the time you get to like six, you're like, oh my God, that's when you start praying because it's like, oh my God, help me now because this is so challenging. You do each leg 10 times. And that's it. It is amazing for your back. Thank you for asking for that. And of course, this show is going to live um, on some of the platforms so you can refer back to it if you missed it. Thank you, Kathy, for all those hearts. I see it in Nolans. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, fantastic. Shella Sweetums, thank you. I'm so happy that I was able to answer your questions. Keep your questions coming in. Make sure that you tune in next week. So next week's show, we have an acne hack. We're going to be talking about headaches, how to improve your energy levels as well. If there's other topics that you want me to cover, make sure that you put it in the comments as well. And it was so great to have you all here today. I'm actually going on my, what I call my marathon. I'm going to be on television for the next few days now. So I will see you next week here at the Dr. Janine Show. So great to have you all here. Thanks to all my new followers. Thanks for everybody who shared today's live as well. I always endeavor to teach you and to empower you over the healing of your own body, mind, and spirit. It was so great to have you all here today and we'll see you next week.